Hi, and welcome to section 10.1 and 10.2, where we'll be comparing two population means, doing some hypothesis tests on them. So very often, you're going to want to compare the results from two different samples. An example of this could be the effects of a drug, comparing the results from the test subjects to the placebo groups, or maybe comparing the results of a particular diet or exercise program. We're going to be doing several types of comparisons coming up in the next week or so. Um, the one we're going to focus on today is independent groups, so that means the samples are independent from each other, and that we're going to be looking at tests of two population means. Later this week, we'll do population proportions and some dependent group testing. Let's jump in right with an example. So the first example we're going to do is going to be comparing population means when the standard deviations of the population are unknown. A study is done to determine which of two soft drinks has more sugar. There are 13 cans of beverage one in a sample and 16 cans of beverage two. The mean amount of sugar in beverage one is 36 grams with a standard deviation of 0.6 grams. The mean amount of sugar in beverage two is 36.5 grams. Did I say 36? I hope I did. With a standard deviation of 0.8 grams. The researchers believe that beverage two has more sugar than beverage one on average. Both populations have normal distributions. We're gonna have a little step zero here, um, a little different from our other hypothesis testing and that's just to note which beverage is which, and it makes sense in this one to use subscript one for beverage one and subscript two for beverage two, you'll also see subscripts A and B. And our random variable is going to be the difference in the mean amount of sugar between the two um, samples. So let's go ahead and find the null and alternative hypotheses. So well, the researchers believe that beverage two has more sugar than beverage one on average. All right, so that means that mu one is going to be less than mu two, right? Beverage two has more sugar. So that has to be an alternative hypothesis because it doesn't have an equal sign in it. So our alternative hypothesis is that mu one is less than mu two. And our null hypothesis is that mu one is greater than or equal to mu two. Thinking about these as a difference, the difference between the two means just kind of does a little bit of algebra there. And now our null hypothesis is mu one minus mu two is greater than or equal to zero, which would mean mu one was bigger. Or the alternative is that mu1 minus mu2 is less than zero, which would mean mu1 was smaller than mu2. Now we need to find the dist appropriate distribu distribution and write down what we know. The population standard deviations are unknown. So just like with confidence intervals and single mean hypothesis testing, we're going to use the student's t distribution here. Um, reading through our data, we are told that there are 13 cans of beverage one, and 16 cans of beverage two. So that's n sub one and n sub two. The mean amount of sugar in beverage one is 36. So that's X one bar and a standard deviation of 0 0.6. So that's S one. The mean amount of sugar in beverage two is 36.5 grams. So that's X two bar and the standard deviation of the sample is 0 0.8. So that's S two, right? We're gonna try to find our P value, which is the probability that the difference in means is less than negative 0.5, given that they are the same. That's our null assumption is that they are the same. All right, we're going to use our online inference for the mean calculator. We're using sample statistics, and this time we're choosing two samples. They're independent. We decided we want a t-test, and we're going to always use not pooled for this sort of inference for the mean. So always choose not pooled, and we're going to use the calculation, the welch satter thwaite Calculation for degrees of freedom, it's kind of like a weighted average. Go ahead and just select that one. Remember, our alternate hypothesis was a less than. It was a left tail. So we're going to do that and put in all our values that we just found for um, the different samples. All right, hit calculate. And we come up with a test statistics t-score of negative 1.92. Our p-value is 0 0.0326. And the calculated degrees of freedom was 26.864. All right, I don't think this actually says significance. I think I have some extra levels in there. Sig, nif, I have an extra C. Against level was not given, so we choose alpha equal to 0.05. And this is a left tail test because the alternative hypothesis was less than. So our p value is lower than alpha. The p value is low, the null must go. And the probability, so the probability that the difference between the means was a half given that they are, we assume they were the same, is less than 0.05, which is 0.033. So the null suggested they were equal. The alternative suggested the beverage one had less sugar. The null must go. So our conclusion is the evidence suggests that beverage one has less sugar on average than beverage two 
at a 5% significance level. That's our conclusion. Um, this step you don't have to do. I just kind of like doing it. Um, here was our T distribution. I put in our test statistic that they calculated, and we got the probability of that test statistic to be 0.03. That was our p-value. But what we are seeing is that our p-value was below our cutoff here in this graph. So um, we can see that we are going to have to reject the null hypothesis. We're in the rejection region. All right, example two, let's do one with known population standard deviations. A researcher is testing the effect of plant food on plant growth. Nine plants have been given the plant food. Another nine plants have not been given the plant food. The heights of the plants are recorded after eight weeks. The populations have normal distributions, and the following table is the result. The researcher thinks the food makes the plant grow taller. We're going to test this claim at a 1% significance level. So again, we just need to make sure we set up some notation. We know which group is the food group and which one is the no food group. So we're going to use subscript one for the food group and subscript two for the no food group. And we're going to have our random variable be the difference in the mean heights x1 minus x2. All right, what are our null and alternative hypotheses? Well, the researcher thinks the food makes the plant grow taller. So that would mean that the height in, for the food group would be bigger than the height for the not food group, right? So that's going to be our alternative hypothesis that mu1 is greater than mu2. And therefore, our null hypothesis is that the food does not make a difference, right? That mu1 is less than or equal to mu2. Maybe they're the same. All right, step two, find the appropriate distribution and write down what we know. Well, if you look back, we do have population standard deviations given to us in our table, so those are known. So we're going to use a normal distribution. We're able to calculate it using this horrible mess of a normal distribution, but luckily we don't really have to jump in too much with that because we use our online calculators. Using our inference for the mean, we do sample statistics, two samples, and independent still. This time we're going to choose a Z test because we have population standard deviations. Enter those guys. Our alternative hypothesis this time was greater than. Um, if we look back, let's make sure we look at that. The greater than, mu1 is greater than mu2. That's what the researcher thinks. Um, putting in our data for the plants and we hit calculate. Our significance level was given at alpha equal to 0 0.01. And this is a right tail test. If we look at our p-value, it's actually a higher than alpha. P-value is high, no must fly. So there is not sufficient evidence. Our conclusion is there is not sufficient evidence at a 1% significance level that the plant food actually increased the plant heights. If we looked at this at a 5% significance level, we can see this is actually a pretty small p-value. If we were testing at a 5% significance level, we would be able to conclude. We would have to reject the null hypothesis and we could conclude that the plant food made a difference and made the plants grow taller. So really depends on what significance level you're testing at, what your result and conclusion is going to be. All right, that's all for this section.